Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2016 in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Alison Maynard Gibson, who is Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs for the Bahamas. Thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you so much for having me. So delighted to be here. Now, one of the reasons that you're here is that I would like to obviously congratulate you on the signing of the agreement uh, today to host GSR 17, the Global Symposium for Regulators in 2017. The Bahamas are so excited and so honored to be able to host. We're looking forward to welcoming so many countries in the Bahamas, and we hope that it will be the best such conference ever. We are certainly looking forward to it and ask everybody to come. It will be a most <laughs> memorable occasion. Indeed. Now, what are some of the initiatives I wanted to, to start off by asking you uh, being pursued by the government of the Bahamas in relation to the development of ICTs? Well, we're really fortunate in the Bahamas that we have a very visionary prime minister who really understands that ICTs are the way to go in the 21st century. And it's extremely important for empowering our people and most especially our young people and bringing them into the 21st century. We are, we are an archipelago. We are the first smart island in the Western Hemisphere declared by the ITU. And, you know, with an archipelago in particular, it's very important to link all of our people. So the government is fully committed to e-government, to making sure that citizens across the Commonwealth of the Bahamas are able to access government directly on their smartphones. So we have the ability, for example, to obtain e-passports in your own country, making online applications for them birth certificates, death certificates, certified copies of them issued in your own island so you don't have to come to the capital. We're aggressively pursuing telemedicine. We have education, virtual classrooms. I mean, we could sit here the whole afternoon and list all of the things that we are doing. We really fully understand the critical importance of this and we are so um, grateful for some, uh, an advocate who has uh, in the political will is there and the funds are being uh, allocated for it to happen. That's wonderful. And what are the key challenges that the government faces in achieving its development goals? Well, our population is only 360,000. So if we think of a world context and countries that have been featured here whose populations are in the tens of millions, you know, we have a, a challenge in terms of having the critical mass um, to actually move things along and get them done. So we're always happy to be a part of an organization like the ITU where we can actually have expertise I'll come to the table to assist us. Um, and also, because we are an archipelago, uh, whereas if we are a contiguous landmass, we would have, for example, one airport. We have 28 airports. And if we can imagine all of the infrastructure that comes with that, as we, as we have seen here, to really have a smart city, you have to have the foundational infrastructure to support it. It's expensive. Um, it's something that we are committed to, but as you, you use the word challenge, I think that's exactly the right word. It's not insurmountable, but it's something that has to be faced, and, and it's something we're doing, pursuing. And in your opinion, what's the most important factor in accelerating the digital economy? I think that um, knowledge, innovation, um, the ability to actually network and collaborate, because actually not, there's not... A, it's not, knowledge is not reposed in one person, so we really have to network to promote creativity and innovation, which is a commodity today. And so really, because it is the wave of the future, the whole idea of bringing all of our young people together and working in those kinds of groups that really cause innovation to flourish, I think it's really very important to do. And this is collaboration at, at, a, at a, a national and international level? Both, both national and international. And of course, uh, the digital age enables that to happen, and our young people warmly embrace those ideas. Finally, I'd like to ask you, you've taken the time to, to come here to Bangkok. Uh, I'm sure I'd have a very busy schedule. I wanted to find out, what's the value of events such as ITU Telecom World for you? Um, <laughs> it's extremely important to come to these kinds of events, not only for me, but also for our, su our support team, our delegation. Um, to see what's actually happening uh, in the rest of the world, to, to have a vision of where we actually need to get, and also to make the contacts for how to get there, and to reestablish friendships and relationships so that they are all re-energized. It's extremely important. And we're so happy to be here. We're very grateful for the warm generosity of the 
all of the, all of our friends in the ITU. I, I can't say thank you enough. And we look forward to being hosted in 2017 for the Global Symposium for Regulators. And thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today. We're looking forward to everybody coming and we hope that they will spend some time either before or after meeting, after the meeting to also see our wonderful country as well. Not just work, but have some downtime enjoyment as well. I have no doubt they will. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.